Okay, hello everyone. We're live now and with some technical difficulties, we are ready to go. I know that we are celebrating 100 episodes today and that's really exciting. We've been doing this for just over a couple years now. So I'm really glad you're joining us. Uh, really pumped to uh, get started on this episode. We got some news to share with you all. And uh, I got some sharing to do with you all with regards to what we've been up to, how long we've been doing this, and uh, just just all the exciting things that we've had happen on here on Canadian Mortgage Weekly. Uh, so let's get started on this here today. And we'll just wait for a couple things here to load. All right, so today we're just on Facebook. We're not on YouTube. We're not on Twitter because of the technical difficulties. But, you know, why do I do this? Why do I do Canadian Mortgage Weekly? And that's simply because I would like to get all this information out to you all and uh, just all the mortgage news and all the mortgage uh, uh, events that are happening around the world and especially in Canada how it affects all the mortgage holders and homeowners in Canada. So that's why I've been doing it. It's, you know, has it been useful? I think it definitely has been useful. We've had a lot of folks that have commented on the videos in the past that, you know, it's been useful for them. It's helped them with their home purchase. It's helped them with their refinance. Uh, it's helped them with just what they are been up to with regards to their mortgage, giving them some more insight into what is happening with their mortgage. I'm gonna see if I can share my screen here. Can I do that? Hmm. Can't do that on here, but that is all right. Uh, you know, how have people been responding? I think people have been responding pretty well. I mean, we always are starting to get more and more views as much as we go. I know when I first started this in 2020, it started as a uh, live video, a question and answer. And with that, it wasn't really getting very many views. It wasn't really getting very many uh, shares, but as it's grown, it's grown to be pretty big and it, you know, it can get bigger and it all comes down to the viewers and what they're up to. So how have people been responding? Well, even last night I had someone come up to me saying, wow, I really like your videos. Uh, it's really exciting that you're doing the 100th episode tomorrow, which is happening right now. I'm really excited. I got the balloons behind me. As a matter of fact, I even brought this party hat with me today. So I'll put that on. Might be a New Year's party hat, but there you go. Anyway, uh, so people are responding pretty well. And with that, it's been, it's been really fun to do this with you all. All right, let's see if I can share something here with you all. I can't really do that here. Okay, I'm not sure why Facebook doesn't allow you to share anything. Let's see. Can we do this here? Dashboard actions, add column. Nope, no sharing today. So with regards to, you know, how are the financial impacts of these episodes? Well, my goal is that as everyone's watching these episodes that they're able to actually get some sort of feedback as to what they need to do with their mortgage. And, you know, with, with anyone dealing with the banks directly, I know the banks like to sell the products that are available directly through them. And with the products that are available directly through them, a lot of the times they're products that are not really the best fit for the mortgage customer. So as a mortgage broker, I like to go over all the different products available and all the different options available to the customer and how it impacts the customer that way. So if you're looking at getting a mortgage product, sometimes it's not really the best option to go directly to the bank. Sometimes it's the best option to go to a broker so we can evaluate all the different products. And then I talk about those products on this show to share with you all that for you. So the financial impact would be that perhaps you're saving money by taking the right kind of mortgage. Perhaps you're saving money by taking the right term, the right, you know, if it's variable or fixed or whatnot. 
So how can people use these episodes to their benefit? Well, a lot of the ways that I hope that people use this episode and all previous episodes to their benefit would be to allow themselves to, hey, Joe's talking about these products. Perhaps I should reconsider or really consider what he's saying based on, you know, what's available out there and, um, you know, how much it affects me with the product that I'm currently looking at and perhaps look at other products available to you in the mortgage market. What's going to happen in the future? Well, I'm going to continue doing Canadian Mortgage Weekly Live. Uh, looking forward to celebrating the 101th episode next week. Uh, you know, and with doing this episode, it also keeps me on top of the news for my clients and on top of what's happening in the market for my clients and and everything that's available with the mortgage products available. It keeps me updated and it allows me to be fresh and on top of the mortgage news. Whereas another mortgage broker or a banking representative may not even know what's happening with regards to the mortgage products specifically that are available or the news that are available to them uh, because they're not really doing the same research that I'm doing on a weekly basis. So what should people be doing? Well, they should be tuning into this show and also uh, bookmarking it, subscribing. Uh, I know we're on Facebook right now, but I'll make sure to upload this to YouTube and uh, Twitter after the fact so you guys can all have views on that so you guys can take a look at that. But let's take a look at some of the recent news uh, before I continue celebrating here. And as we celebrate, I got my little <laughs> thing going on. And uh, thanks for joining in on my 100th episode. So. What's the five-year bond yield doing these days? I don't have my screen shared today, so we'll have to do this a little bit differently. Well, the five-year bond yield sitting at 3.33% today. And because of that, it's been staying steady just above 3% uh, since the last rate update in July. It's been very interesting because, because the bond yield has been up uh, over 3%. Uh, it did peak in July and then had a slight softening since then. And it has not really reached that same peak since July. And because of that, we've seen five-year fixed rates drop quite considerably, uh, about 50 to 60 basis points, which has allowed a lot of our clients to be able to get a pre-approval set at a little bit of a lower rate than they otherwise would in July. So if you're looking to get pre-approved, it's really imperative that you do that before rates go up any further, if they go up further from here. And uh, the trend, it's staying about 3%. I don't really see it going down under 3% anytime soon. Uh, and because it's staying above 3%, we should not really expect fixed rates to fall for the next little while at least. So as I said, because the bond yields were, did drop since the summer, it'd be a great idea to get pre-approved and do that so you can get a lower rate uh, than you otherwise would in the summer. If you did get pre-approved in the summer, your pre-approval may be expiring shortly. So make sure you do get uh, your pre-approval reset and redone for another 120 days. So it's at that lower rate. All right, where is inflation at currently for Canada? Well, inflation for Canada right now, it's currently at 7%. It's still fairly high. And because inflation's at 7%, I mean, the Bank of Canada is doing what it can to bring it down to 2%, which is a lot lower than the 7% tar uh, seven percent current uh, amount. Uh, it did drop quite considerably since June, which was at 8.1%. So whatever the Bank of Canada is doing, which is, low, uh, which is raising interest rates as well as sucking uh, cash out of the market right now through quantitative tightening, it's been working and we've seen inflation now drop from 8.1% to 7%. Inflation is still happening, however, so we really can't say it's over yet. And perhaps inflation will continue into the near future, probably six to 12 months from what I'm seeing and hearing from other experts in the market. And because of that, the Bank of Canada will likely continue to raise interest rates uh, until then. So we have probably have another six to 12 months to go. And I know with the Fed in the States, they have recently raised rates as of last week by 75 basis points because they're combating their own inflation numbers down there. 
and it'll be really important to see what Canada does come October 26th, which is the next rate announcement by the Bank of Canada. All right, so the inflation has been trending down since June, so that's good news. Before that, it was trending up with that high point in June at 8.1%, and now we're sitting at 7% for the inflation target, uh, the inflation rate currently. And Tiff Macklin has said that they're going to do whatever they can at the Bank of Canada to bring inflation to that 2% target. All right, and how has that really been affecting Canadians and Canadian homeowners? Well, for home prices, it's really put a damper on home prices because home prices have been softening due to the fact that people cannot afford as much as they could before because rates have gone up. And because rates have gone up, that's that's affecting people's qualifying on their mortgage. It's also affected groceries, gas prices, uh, all those have been rising and rent prices have been rising as well. So if you're a landlord, you've probably seen that to rent out your place now, you can rent it for a higher amount than you could otherwise last year. I've heard some rents even spiking 20% since last year in certain markets. All right, so if the trending down does continue for inflation, we could see that the rate hikes will subside, but that will most likely be still in another six to 12 months. We probably still have six to 12 months of inflation happening as the Bank of Canada tries to tackle that and bring it down to that 2% level. Now, where is the uh, where is everything happening for the United States? How is the inflation there in the United States? Well, it's down to 8.3% currently, which is higher than the Canadian inflation, but it has come down from the high point of 9.1%. So that is quite considerable, uh, quite a good drop. I mean, if we drop 1% a month, then we will eventually get to that 2% rate that the U.S. is aiming for as well. But we did see the U.S. raise their target interest rate by 75 basis points last week. So we could see Canada doing similar things come October 26th because we're nowhere close to that 2% mark right now. And to be close to that 2% mark, we'll need to continue to raise interest rates and the government will continue need to do that quantitative tightening through the uh, through the taking cash out of the market. All right, so where's the CDOR rate? And what is the CDOR rate? Well, the CDOR rate is a deposit rate that I use to, and a lot of experts and professionals use to see how good the variable rate mortgage is, how good of a deal it is in comparison to the fixed rate mortgage. Well, currently the CDOR rate is sitting at 4.17%. It has steadily been changing and trending upwards. And we look at prime rate, which is at 5.45%. So it is higher than the CDOR rate. So we look at that variance and that's currently at 1.28%. So the variance is quite low. And because the variance is under 2%, it it shows me that the fixed rate option should be an option that each mortgage home or each mortgage holder and Canadian homeowner should consider if they're taking a new mortgage today. However, if you currently have a variable rate mortgage, you may have a good discount, which could give you a larger variance. So it all depends on your specific mortgage scenario. So if you have a variable rate mortgage, don't take that to mean that you need to lock in your fixed rate mortgage. But if you're taking on a new mortgage, Considering a fixed rate mortgage could be a smart move for you, depending on your plans and what you're doing for the next three to five years. Always talk to your mortgage professional. Uh, and if you don't have one, definitely give me a call about getting set up to look at your options, whether fixed or variable is right for you. Everyone is different. So it's important to see what is right for you in that specific situation. Uh, so as I said, because of the CDOR rate being where it's at, it's a good time to consider that. However, you know, myself, I'm sticking with the variable rate mortgage. And with that variable rate mortgage, it allows me to have flexibility. A lot of things can happen in three to five years. You know, life changes, life happens, and I may need to refinance, I may need to sell, I may need to make a large prepayment, I may need to transfer my mortgage. I may need to do a lot of things. So if I have a fixed rate mortgage, 
I don't want to be subject to a very high penalty that is in the five figures breaking that three to five year fixed mortgage, whereas the variable rate mortgage has that much lower penalty amount. All right, so let's look at the Bank of Canada and what their plans are in the next little while. I know I will have a uh, special pre-rate show and live interest rate announcement here on Canadian Mortgage Weekly come October 26th. That's the next time the Bank of Canada is meeting to discuss interest rates and make a decision on where they're going. Now, we still have some inflation numbers that will come out before then, so we'll see what those are at. Maybe inflation will drop from the current 7% that the can Canadian government has been reporting for the last month. If they do, we'll see how far they dropped. However, with the states and the United States raising interest rates by 75 basis points last week, we could definitely see Canadian uh, government follow suit with a raising of interest rates again in October. That would not be surprising at this point. And as a variable rate mortgage holder, I just I need to eat some more craft dinner, that kind of thing, until we get through this. I know that. Looking at the past recessions, which is 2008, 2009, and prior to that, interest rates never really stayed high for more than 12 to 18 months. Canadians cannot handle that. And we've already been seeing a lot of um, changes because rates have gone up. I mean, condo projects are being either canceled or put on hold. Builders are pausing on on building because interest rates have gone up, which is going to really take a lot of homes that would have come on the market out of the market. And with um, uh, immigration being targeted at over 400,000, I think I saw the number at 460,000 this year, that's gonna bring a lot of new Canadians into Canada, which are gonna be looking for homes as well. So no new homes coming on the market or less new homes, more Canadians coming in. It's going to continue to put pressure on the housing market and uh, you know all that C Canadians will need to have more homes and I don't think the government is interested in seeing builders um, pause or delay condo projects or or townhome building projects or anything like that in the next foreseeable future so right now the Bank of Canada over an rate is at 3.25 percent that is quite a lot higher than it was at the start of COVID when they brought it down to 0.25 percent so a quarter percent so many many hundreds of percent higher at this point it's a rates that we haven't seen since 2008 at this point and uh next rate announcement is october 26th so let's look at the national house price average and where we're at for that so right now the national house price average is sitting at six hundred and thirty seven thousand six hundred and seventy three dollars and because not because, but where it's at right now, it's actually risen from the prior month by one and a half percent. So this has been the first trend uh, trend change since February, because since February, before that we were trending down every month with February being the high point and with the most recent month now, we've changed our trend and now we're going back up 1.5%. Do you guys think this trend will continue? Do you think the trend will continue to increase at small amounts or do you think that this is a blip and we'll continue to see house prices softening i'm not sure and i have spoken with a lot of local real estate agents here and they have said that it's the certain pockets certain neighborhoods really haven't been affected by the interest rates people sometimes will still buy in certain neighborhoods they still are buying a certain type of home so it's also really good to speak to your local real estate agent and if you don't have one make sure you reach out to me. I'm connected with local real estate agents all across Ontario and can connect you with a real estate agent in your local area so you can get set up and uh, talking about what prices are doing in your area and what pockets and what types of houses are affected or not affected. Anyway, uh, so prices are now close to where they were at the beginning of COVID. So that would be March, April of 2020 which is quite interesting. We'll see what happens going forward. If this trend going back up continues, as I mentioned, prices have gone up one and a half percent since the prior month. So that's uh, some good news for homeowners out there. All right, so what does that mean with the amount of income you need to buy the average price home? So without any debts 
and uh, you will need an average household income of $133,000 to buy the average house price uh, home in Canada. So $133,000 can afford you a home at $637,673, and that is with the minimum down payment, which is 5% plus closing costs, and that would be $41,448.75. So if you can save up $41,448.75 and make a minimum of $133,000 as a household and have no debt, then you'll be able to afford the average price home. Things that really affect your affordability these days are things like car loans, a car payment can really affect your affordability. If you have a car payment of $1,000 a month for that pickup truck that you just bought last year or loaded up Jeep that you just bought last year, then that's really going to affect your affordability quite considerably. So we're seeing people actually sell their vehicles or even delay purchasing because of that because they just can't afford anything in the market right now. And uh, as I mentioned, this is the first uptrend since uh, February. Now a couple other things I wanted to mention here on Canadian Mortgage Weekly and I wanted to share some videos here today but I'm not going to be able to do that exactly here today but if you ever go on our Facebook page or onto my YouTube page or onto my Twitter. So my Twitter is at Be Mortgage Free. Uh, my Facebook is facebook.com slash Be Mortgage Free. That's B-E Mortgage Free. And if you go to my YouTube, it's just uh, Barry Mortgage Broker on the YouTube channel. And you'll see all the videos we've uploaded. We have over 100 videos now. We have 100 podcast episodes. And we have numerous other short form videos that we have done that react to articles and other videos posted by either real estate professionals and, uh, and other mortgage brokers and, and just people talking about the housing market. Uh, so some of the, looking back at some of the episodes I've done here over the past, uh, you know, two, three years now, since 2020, since this all started, I think we started in May of 2020 with some live question and answer episodes where we would just go live and see what questions we would get. Um, but looking at some of our videos, like the one we did last week, why houses cost more as prices fall? I looked at the comparison between buying at the peak of the market last uh, in, in February versus buying now. And we actually found out that if you buy now, you're actually going to pay more interest over the five years rather than buying in February. But also, if you bought in February, you would have put a higher down payment than you would versus now. So it's very interesting how that all works out. and. Um, and I encourage you, if you're interested in that, go watch that episode. We've done a, a live rate announcement. Every time the Bank of Canada has met to do a, a rate announcement here, and we've seen rate announcements where there's no change. We've seen rate announcements where the rate has gone down. And we've seen rate announcements where rates have gone up. And we give you our, our commentary on that as well. All right. Uh, We've looked at other TikTok videos and actually debunked other mortgage agents TikTok videos here. Uh, we did a couple on-site episodes here. I know that we did a, a episode about the top three most popular renovations and that was done in front of a nice pool. And uh, we talked about you know kitchen renovations, bathroom renovations, and also adding a pool. A lot of times people have home equity and they want to use that home equity towards some sort of uh, renovation that they want to do on their house because it's really hard to afford a new house right now or move so sometimes it's easier just to refinance and then add a new kitchen or that bathroom that you would like instead of moving into a house that has that already ready so we've looked at some of those uh, things that you can and can't do when transferring your mortgage uh, five things to consider when negotiating the terms of your mortgage cost of transferring your mortgage. We did a whole month of transferring your mortgage. So that was nice to do. Uh, what else have we done here? Uh, I know uh, in January we talked about the five mortgage and real estate real mortgage and real estate trends to look out for in 2020, 20, 
in 2022. Um, we looked at you know seven ways uh, using the new to Canada mortgage program can help you get a home faster. So if you're an immigrant or just received your permanent residence card, definitely check out that episode. It was episode 60 from January 27th of this year where we talked about different ways you can use that new to Canada mortgage program to get into a home faster and at best rates too. Uh, in February, we covered off unique incomes, uh, some different ways that different lenders actually calculate income. And if you look at some of the big name banks you see on the corner of our streets, a lot of those banks calculate incomes differently than some of these other lenders that only mortgage brokers have access to. So if you're looking for a higher amount of mortgage, definitely give me a call. We can set you up with that. We've had a couple special guests throughout the years different real estate agents, other money management professionals uh, to talk about different aspects of the mortgage process and the real estate process. And they've given their opinion on, you know, where they think the market's going, what they need, what they think that the client, what our clients should do and all that. Uh, in May, we did a whole uh, series on investors, talked about the Burr method in 2022. We talked about uh, how to buy an investment property with no money down. That was a really good episode and something that uh, was was really popular as well. Uh, and also in uh, June, we talked about different types of mortgage products. So home equity lines of credit, cash back mortgage products. There are actually mortgages that will pay you a cash back to set up that mortgage with that lender. So lots of different options. And we were even uh, talking about some, some costs involved if you were to transfer your mortgage and how to get your mortgage transferred for free. So say your mortgage is coming up for maturity and uh, you want to look at getting a better rate, but you don't want to pay any legal fees or appraisal fees. Well, there are actually mortgage companies that will compensate you for that if you're looking for a better deal than what your bank is offering. So it's a really easy way to pay a little bit less interest, to pay a little bit less per month. I know that's counting a lot more these days as rates go up. Anyway, really excited to be celebrating this 100th episode. Some of the other things that I wanna share with you is we've actually been featured in a few online articles. One of them was by MoneyWise. Uh, they uh, saw our uh, podcast and mentioned it in the article. I really can't share it right now because I can't share my screen, but uh, we did an episode back last year where it was featured in that Money Wise article. So awesome to see that we are getting some traction out there. And it was another article there with the post that was fe that featured Canadian Mortgage Weekly. And uh, they did some quotes from me about first time home buyers and how there's some liberal, liberal election promises that uh, helps home buyers, which is one of those being the first time home savings account, which is one of those uh, options now that first time home buyers can use towards building some down payment tax free towards their home purchase. So that was really awesome to see. And if you want to search Canadian Mortgage Weekly, you'll be able to find that article yourself. And uh, yeah, so if you're looking at uh, if you're looking at doing anything mortgage related, please do give me a call. My name is Joe Bladdock. I am based out of Aurelia, Ontario, and I service uh, mortgages across Ontario virtually. So we can set up a Zoom meeting or WhatsApp call or whatever you need to uh, get started on your mortgage process. Thanks for joining me for my 100th episode and uh, celebrating with me on this anniversary party. I know that uh, I'm pretty excited. We did have some technical difficulties this morning, so we were a little bit late starting. However, we're here now, and I'll make sure I get this video uploaded to YouTube and Twitter. And in the meantime, thanks for watching all our episodes up to this point. I uh, really appreciate all your likes and comments and shares, and I look forward to doing episode 101 next week at Thursday at 11.30. And we'll see you then if I figure out how to turn this off. All right, we'll see you next time.